Oh. 
Merry Christmas. Thank you all. Wonderful, wonderful. It's my privilege to welcome you to Christ Church Cathedral uh, tonight and uh, for this blessed time together when God does this extraordinary, outrageously loving thing and comes to live among us and within us. So I hope we remember tonight that God sheds peace and hope and love upon us and within us, and that we might leave this place offering that to others, and this world will bit by bit by bit find its way. Welcome, so glad you're here. Uh, the opening hymn, oops, the bishop has a thing. Good evening. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This evening, as we gather on this holy night to turn our gaze towards Bethlehem, we are mindful that the place of Jesus' birth and the place of his earthly ministry is in war and conflict. So I invite you to please stand with me and join in a moment of silence to remember those who have lost their lives in this conflict, and that we pray that the Prince of Peace whose coming we proclaim tonight may spread peace abroad in our nation and across the world. Let us gather ourselves into Christ's presence with a moment of silence. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah,
light, and peace in Jesus Christ, our incarnate one. Blessed be the Holy One who comes anew this night. In the tender compassion of our God, to shine upon all people. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Savior. Amen. My sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, God is with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, bring us, who known the revelation of that light on earth, to see the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, as we prepare with joy to celebrate the gift of the child of the Christ child, embrace the earth with your glory and be for us a living hope in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child, has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God's people.
Please join me in praying Psalm 96 responsively. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all over earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Declare his glory among the nations. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm and cannot be moved. He will judge the people in the heavens. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. He will judge the world with righteousness. A reading from Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, 
because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was, with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of our Savior. the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good evening and Merry Christmas again. I want to begin my sermon this evening by asking you a question. What brought you here tonight? What made you leave the comfort of your home with the people and I suspect the pets that you love to come sit in this cathedral? What are you longing for? What are you looking for? What are you hoping for this evening? Perhaps you came here this evening looking for a sign. Maybe you came to spend some time in the divine presence in this beautiful cathedral. Maybe you came because the world around us is scary and here feels a little less scary but a bit more hopeful. Maybe you came simply because that is what you do on Christmas Eve, or you came because your grandmother dragged you along. (laughs) See my child over there. (laughs) No matter what reason, no matter what your expectation, no matter what you came looking for, God brought you here and called you here. It is no accident that you are here tonight. Like millions around the world and countless across the millennia, we are drawn to the manger. We gather tonight looking for the light of hope born into our world this night. And if we're honest, this is a world consumed with division, preoccupied with war, and ravaged by disaster. Like many of you, I look for some good news somewhere. We all need, we all long for that ray of hope in this night of gloom. And I think we come this evening with expectation in our hearts 
And God breaks into our world at a time when we least expect God to show up. Christmas comes again and again with, it in, with this insistent hope beyond hope. But ultimately, I think that why we came here is to look for hope. We are all in need of and looking for some hope beyond hope. Like the angels who proclaim glory, like the shepherds hearing the absurd and astonishing news, like the magi who come later with wisdom and truth, like the scared Mary and Joseph, who now have the responsibility of raising God. Talk about pressure. We too gather with them to look, to long, and to listen. We look for the places in our world where God is being born anew. We listen for the birth screams of a newborn that pierces the stillness of the night. In our gospel, we don't get a whole lot of details about the birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. That is all we get. Nothing about the 15 hours of labor, nothing about the miracle of Jesus' birth, nothing of the panic of these two new parents who now have God in flesh in their arms and looking at each other going, what do we do now? We get nine words, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. That is it. Nothing more. Just like that, the entire cosmos gathers into one small, innocent, helpless child. But why on earth would God come as a child? Why would the most powerful creator of the cosmos choose to be born into a world of disease and despair and division? Wouldn't it have made more sense to God to dazzle us with power or great authority? Wouldn't it have been easier if God had listened to the prophet Isaiah who screamed to the Holy One, oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come among us with might and authority. You see, I think we want power. We want God to come with all the power and the majesty and the ah of everything. But that's not what we get. We want power and might. We want the one who will dash in Make, save us, make things better, and go back. We want God who will swoop into our world, right the wrongs, punish the evil, smash injustice and oppression, and stand for truth, justice, and the American way. But that is not the God we need. As theologian Robert Farrar Capon once said, the human race is and was and probably always will be deeply unwilling to accept a human Messiah. We don't want to be saved from our humanity. We want to be fished out of it. It's not that we were looking for a Messiah. It's just that he wasn't what we were looking for. But the way of power, the way of authority, the way of death is what he came to break. He came to be the one who transforms even the cold embrace of the tomb into the joyous, jo joyous pro proclamations of resurrection. We long for a God of power, and we get a God of persuasion. We want Superman, and we get Mary's son. This child of Bethlehem is not the Messiah that we want but it is the Messiah that we need. I am convinced that God comes to us as a child because we know what to do with a baby, don't we? Feed me, change me, love me, repeat. And if we're honest with ourselves, that's exactly what all of us are looking for. Feed me, change me, love me, repeat. <laughs> but we long for God who is going to feed us in forgiveness and joy and in compassion. We long to be changed from the pettiness of keeping score and holding grudges to the grace of letting go 
and trusting in God. Each one of us simply wants to be loved and to give love in return. So God comes to us as love so that we can learn to love ourselves and then to love our neighbors. Because the reality is we cannot give what we do not have. If we're not able to love ourselves as love came down in Jesus, we have no hope of loving our neighbor. We struggle sometimes, I suspect, to love ourselves, to recognize the scandal and the enormity of God's love for us coming to be among us. We struggle to know deep down inside our bones that we are capable of being loved. We struggle sometimes to being our own worst critic. And then God becomes a child, a baby, helpless, innocent, and shows us what love actually looks like. God shows us the way of love. And I suspect that that is the hope that we came to this cathedral to look for. That is the hope for which countless followers of Jesus, believer and non-believer, gather in cathedrals and churches and catacombs and chapels to seek for hope found in a baby. What more could we ask for? God breaks into our world and absolutely nothing changes except everything. We come with curiosity of the shepherds, the awe of the angels, the wandering of the magi. We come with the emptiness of the innkeeper, the terrifying joy of Mary and Joseph. And tonight we gather the hopes and fears of all the years, contained in a helpless, ordinary baby that changes our world forever. One of my absolute favorite movies the movie called Children of Men. Has anybody seen that movie? It's obscure, but it's a movie where humanity is about 20 years into the future and no babies had been born. There were no babies, there were no cries, there were no diapers, there were no babies for 20 years. And people were desperate. And then suddenly, an immigrant a mother who was scheduled to be deported is found to be pregnant. And they're trying to save her, to get her to a place where she can deliver this baby in safety. And she travels through this war-torn war city, and she gives birth in the rudest of places, an alley. And as she's walking through this war-torn place with bombs going off and gunfire and all the things that come with war, her baby screams out. And for a second, the entire war stops. No one had heard a baby scream for 20 years. And in that moment, hope is born. In that moment of hearing that child cry out, they realize that in children, in the noises of children, of newborns, resides hope. And for the briefest of moments, the whole war stops. And then we go back to how things were. I suspect the same is true for us now. In Gaza, in Ukraine, in South Sudan, amidst the bombs and the bombardment, hope defiantly insists on coming. In the rubble and the rancor, hope defies logic and persists in showing up even when we face death. Because out of love, God gave up power and might. God gave up glory and authority for a manger. To be born among the lowly, the least, the lost, the left out, and the left behind. God exchanged might for a manger, power for, for, for persuasion, and strength for swaddling bands. 
You see, Christmas then is not about the things, the brightly wrapped presents beneath the tree that we long for, but about all the hope beyond hope that we cannot sometimes see. We hope beyond hope that this is the time, this is the year that we will beat our swords, the plowshares, and study war no more. That this time the power of love will overcome the love of power. We hope beyond hope that the lowly will truly be lifted up and that the ashes of mourning will become the garments of gladness. We hope beyond hope that the broken relationships of our lives may be healed, that each person may be seen and heard and given dignity and worth. We hope beyond hope that our lives are not in vain, that our striving transform our pain, and that we can be healed by an innocent child at Bethlehem. You see, at Christmas, we hope beyond hope we hope beyond hope that love will finally lead the way, that all the broken dreams and shattered promises of our lives, that God will be with us always, in always. That God will be born again and again in the back alleys and by, at byways where Jesus' siblings are rejected and forgotten. I am convinced we come here tonight with longing an expectation in our hearts to hope beyond hope for a time, for the tiniest of spaces, that God Emmanuel will be born and will break once more into our world in the most fragile of times with this thing called hope. That is the message of Christmas. As the Reverend Polly Murray put it, she put it this way, Hope is a word in a tuneless ditty, a word whispered with the wind, a dream of 40 acres and a mule, a cabin of one's own and a moment to rest, a name and place for one's children and children's children at last. Hope is a song in a weary throat. Give me a song of hope and a world where I can sing it. Give me a faith, a song of faith, and a people to believe it. Give me a song of kindness and a country where I can live it. Give me a song of hope and love and a brown girl's heart to hear it. Tonight, tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that, we proclaim hope. Hope found in a helpless child full of promise that our world will be set right that our divisions will one day be healed, that we will care for the earth and each other, and that we will study war no more. So no matter what brought you here tonight, no matter how you got here, no matter if your grandmother dragged you or your grandfather threatened you, <laughs> in Jesus' birth, we are all sent out like the angels and the shepherds to go. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hill and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born, that hope beyond hope is born, that love beyond love is born, that God Emmanuel is with us today, tomorrow, and always. And that, my sisters and brothers, is where we ground our hope. So as you leave this place tonight, as you go back to the things of Christmas, may God bless you. And may you go from this place to proclaim not just with your lips, but with your lives, with your very being, that in this child of Bethlehem, in this Jesus, we have glimpsed hope beyond hope. Amen.
Together, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayer. On this holy night, Christians across the world are celebrating Christ's birth. Light of the world, open our hearts that Christ may be born in us. Holy God, On this holy night, the angels sang, Peace to God's people on earth. Light of the world, strengthen those who work for peace and justice in our nation and around the world. Holy God, on this holy night, shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. We give thanks for all those remembered in thanksgiving and honor who made possible the cathedral decorations tonight. Light of the world, give us grace to preach the good news of Christ. Holy God, on this holy night, strangers found the holy family and saw the baby lying in the manger. Light of the world, help us to greet strangers as members of your family. Holy God, on this holy night, there was no room for your son in the inn. Light of the world, protect with your love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. Holy God, on this holy night, your Christ came as a light shining in the darkness. Light of the world, bring comfort to all who suffer in the sadness of our days. We pray especially this night for all killed, suffering, and grieving, such great losses in the Middle East and Ukraine. Holy God, on this holy night, heaven has come down to earth and earth is raised to heaven. Light of the world, bring into the fullness of your presence all who have died and those in whose loving memory the cathedral is adorned. Holy God, on this holy night, all who look to you in hope proclaim the glory of your name. Light of the world, receive the glad praise we offer in companionship with Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the angels, the saints, and all those who worship alongside this night. Holy God, 
O God of heavenly glory and earthly peace, you have hallowed this sacred night with the joyful tidings of Christ's birth. May the light dawning upon us kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may shine forth your glory in love. In Christ's name, amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk Our loving God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord, through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you to eternal life. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace. I told you that wasn't going to work. <laughs> Merry Christmas and uh, blessings to you as well. Thank you so much, Bishop, for being with us this night and for your sermon and hope, 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 hope. Communion is open to all who would like to receive, and the communion station will be forward here, and you'll go back around this way, um, not through here, but around that way. For seven consecutive days, beginning December 26, we're all invited to celebrate the cultural contributions of people of African descent during Kwanzaa, sponsored by our Cathedral's Pursuing Racial Justice Committee. Each day of the cultural celebration features a principle of Kwanzaa and how it enables us to live our rich lives. And during the celebration, learn how a cathedral congregant turned her creativity into a gift to her community. So visit the cathedral website to learn more about each of the days of Kwanzaa. I want to thank all of you who have answered the call to continue to restock the shelves of our blessing box. For those of you who are, don't know this, we have a blessing box on the side of the building out by the parking lot that was installed during COVID uh, to help in, uh, our neighbors outside. And it's very heavily used, more than you'd imagine. So continue to uh, support that ministry. We thank those who come every day, every week, someone comes every day uh, to fill the box, and it doesn't take long for it to empty either. Right now, our biggest needs are canned stews, ravioli, spaghetti, tuna chicken pouches, or salad kits, fruit cups, applesauce cups, and things like that. And just remember that all of them have to have a pop-top can and be ready to eat as well. And when you're traveling and you're in a hotel, bring back all those little bottles of things and we'll offer them in the, in the box as well. So thank you, thank you. What? <laughs> you can bring those. They might not make you to the blessing box. But <laughs> 
My heartfelt thanks to so many of you who came on Saturday morning and helped green and decorate the church, uh, the cathedral. So wonderful help and fellowship led by Jane Mayfield, and we thank you all for that. And thank you to Debbie Nelson Link, Vicki Nelson, and Dan Link for our glorious crest this year. Please take a chance before you leave to come up and look. Um, it's wonderful, and it, it's really an extravagant glory. So thank you, thank you, Debbie, Vicki, and Dan. It's brilliant and beautiful. Weekday Compline will be on a bit of a hiatus as this dean goes and visits her grandchild in Connecticut. So uh, it will be back on January 8th. And morning prayer will take a hiatus from January 1 to the 5th, returning also on the 8th. There's lots of services posted on our website, so if you go in and need one, they're right there. You can, you can pull them out. I don't know if many of you have heard about the Just Food Truck. Uh, it's finally coming. I think it finally has brakes and everything else it needs to, uh, to go. And um, our hope is it's through Jubilee Ministries and um, uh, Deacon Barbie Click. And uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the side if you'd like to help with that in any way. It'll be... Uh, in the beginning of January, it'll start coming here every other Saturday, and then our hope is it will be here every Saturday morning. And it provides, uh, you know, a hot cereal and hot soup and also coffee, but also sandwiches, and people get to choose um, what they're having to eat as well. So it's a wonderful ministry, and if you'd like to take part, let us know. I want to thank our organist this morning, Connor Scott, up on the organ. Yay, Connor! Thank our intrepid conductor, uh, Tom Dinan, and of course our choir. Thank you so much. Our heartfelt gratitude to our staff, musicians, altar guild, liturgical assistants, fellowship and coffee hour leaders and hosts, for all the faithful work behind the scenes throughout the year, and particularly at special seasons like Advent and Christmas. And even on Saturday, one of our members um, lost her mom, and many of our fellowship members and the people who are part of this community providing food went and provided the food for the repast for that as well, and really uh, touched my heart. So thank you, thank you for all that you do. We are deeply grateful. Anything you'd like to add? I am always mindful that in some ways the church can be the cause of hurt for some folks out there, whether by my actions as bishop or as clergy. And so on the behalf of the church, I offer a deep apology for those who may have been hurt in any way by the actions of the church or the actions of our clergy. We can and should do better. And a way of doing that, we walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Oh, so great joy to tell. 
my sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, <clears throat> always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who, by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, was made perfectly human of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever offer this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you've brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. The night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many that sins may be forgiven. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children, through Jesus Christ our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray.
Behold what you are. The gifts of God, for you, the people of God. So come to this table, you have been here often, and you who've not been here in a long time, you who've tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed, you who are full of faith or full of doubt, come. It is Christ himself who invites us to meet him here.
God is with you. Together, let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the Incarnate One, who sent the Son to take on our human nature, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your hearts with the light of holiness. Amen. May the Eternal One, who sent the angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the good news of God's love. Amen. Amen. May the outrageously loving One, who in the Word made flesh joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you, give you blessed peace and everlasting hope. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the grace of Christ the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, in you, on you, and especially through you, this night and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, go in hope, go in love. Go in the name of the Incarnate One, Alleluia, Alleluia. <laughs>